while they were in the jail at uh, Philippi, mm -hmm. they had gone and they had preached the gospel message there and had uh, upset some people by, by preaching the gospel message, and we'll put it in that way. Mm -hmm. And they were, were beaten and they were thrown into prison. Now one of the keys that we want to look at in this here is to know that Paul, it doesn't say about Silas, but I, I, I think I do recall him saying we uh, in it. But, uh, so that would include Silas. But Paul was a Roman citizen. And he was also a Jewish citizen. He was a citizen of two countries. Okay? And when you keep that in mind, he had dual citizenship. Now, let me tell you why I want, to keep, want you to keep that in mind. If you are a child of God, if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, what you do now have, have is you have citizenship in heaven. Okay. And you also okay. have citizenship here on earth in the country that you live in. So you have dual citizenship. Okay? Now, what I want to do is I want to share with you... Uh, the power of citizenship. Okay. The, and we could call it the rights of citizenship and the authority of citizenship. Because, because um, there's nothing hardly any more powerful than a citizen who is in right standing with a country's government. For when we're in right standing with a country's government, all rights and authority of, that, of, of the citizen according to the laws of the land are ours or the person who is in that right standing, okay? So, let's keep that in mind as we move forward. I want to start with verse, um, verse 35, okay? Because Paul and, and, and Silas are, are in the prison, all right? And when it was day... The magistrates sent the officer, officers saying, let these men go. So the keeper of the prison reported these words to Paul, saying, the magistrates have sent to let you go. Now therefore depart and go in peace. But Paul said to them, they have beaten us openly, uncondemned Romans. Okay, uncondemned Romans. And have thrown us into prison. And now they put us out secretly. No, indeed. Let them come themselves and get us out. And the officers told these words to the magistrates, and they were afraid. And when they heard that they were Romans, then they came and pleaded with them and brought them out and asked them to depart from their city. Now, Paul and Silas had been, had been beaten. They've been under the whip there in, uh, in Philippi. And I believe during a time of praise and worship unto the Lord that night and, 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 all, and all the things that took place in the prison, I believe that God revealed this principle to Paul that let Paul know that he did not have to go under the whip. He did not have to do that anymore because he could take his right mm -hmm. as a Roman citizen and use that to not be beaten. Okay? Now, I'm going to show you, show you that because he said right here in, in the scripture, he says, but Paul said to them, they have beaten us openly, uncondemned Romans, right? Mm -hmm. they, so that, so they, they put them to the, uh, they beat them and Paul recognized this is illegal. All right, this is illegal. You cannot do this to me as a Roman soldier, or as a Roman citizen. I'm, I'm sorry, as a Roman citizen. Now I want you to go to Acts chapter 22. Because Paul comes into another situation here. But this is not an after the fact, but it is before the fact that he uses this principle. Okay? Acts chapter 22. And let's go look at verses 22 through 29. Paul was in, in Jerusalem, 
there was some problems that were happening. A Roman soldier comes and he rescues Paul and, and he takes Paul in to, to, uh, to his custody. Okay, let's pick it up at 22. And they listened to him until the word, until this word, and then they raised their voices and said, Away with such a fellow from the earth, for he is not fit to live. Then as they cried out and tore off their clothes and threw dust into the air, the commander ordered him to be put, brought into the barracks and said that he should be examined under scourging so that he might know why they shouted so against him. And as they bound him with thongs, Paul said to the centurion who stood by, Is it lawful for you to scourge a man who is Roman and uncondemned? And you see what Paul did? Okay. Before he recognized that, after he went through the situation, he recognized that he had a right as a Roman citizen. As a Roman citizen. Now, since he recognized that right or that truth, let's put it in that way, that, that reality, he recognized that. Now he comes to this place in Jerusalem where it's about to happen again. And he says, uh-uh, we're not going to go through it and then come on the other end of it and say something. But we're going to stop this before it ever happens. You see, you see what he's doing there? Amen. Okay, you see what, what's going on? Let's read a little bit further. And when the centurion heard that he went, that heard that, he went and told the commander, saying, Take care what you do, for this man is a Roman. Then the commander came and said to him, Tell me, are you a Roman? He, Roman, he said, Yes. The commander answered, with a large sum I obtained this citizenship. And Paul said, but I was born a citizen. And immediately those who were about to examine him withdrew from him. And the commander was also afraid after he found out that he was a Roman because he had found him. So Paul uses his citizenship to keep from being beaten, okay? You, you, you hear what I'm saying? Right, right. All right. All right. You hear what I have not said yet? Yeah. Okay. Because how many times do we allow things to happen in our lives mm -hmm. when the, the truth of the mm -hmm. Word is there and God shows it to us but yet we keep going through the same situation over and over instead of using our right as a child of God Amen. to come against that, using that protection, all right? So Paul uses his citizenship to stop the beatings and the harassment. We also can stop the beatings and the harassment when the enemy comes against us. Amen. Because you are. Now see, this is something we need to really, really, really understand. You are a citizen of the kingdom of God. Amen. And you are under God's authority and God's constitution and God's protection. Okay? Paul was told by the Lord, listen this, Paul was told by the Lord, and we read it in Scripture, that he was going to go to Rome. Is that correct? Right. He was going to go to Rome. And so nothing that was came against him was going to be able to stop him from going to Rome. Right. Amen. God has given you a purpose and a <clears throat> destiny. And nothing that comes against you should be, it should be able to stop you from reaching your destiny, fulfilling Amen. your purpose. Um, let's go to Ephesians chapter 2. And we're going to look at verse 19. Ephesians 2.19. Father, help us this evening to understand your word, to discover truths that we might be able mm -hmm. to apply those truths to our lives. Mm -hmm. 
to be overcoming children and citizens of the Most High God. By Ephesians 2.19, Now therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Amen. Why? If you read Ephesians chapter 1 and 2, you'll find out it's because of what Jesus did. Mm -hmm. Because of what he did, we are now citizens of the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. You see, what Adam and Eve did was they lost citizenship. Right. And Jesus came to restore Amen. the kingdom Amen. and restore us to proper citizenship. And along with citizenship comes rights okay. and comes authority. Now I'm going to read to you out of the Weymouth Bible. Weymouth New Testament. That uh, uh, Ephesians 2.19. Listen to this. Ye are therefore no longer mere foreigners or persons excluded from civil rights. On the contrary, you share citizenship with God's people and are members of his family. Amen. And that, Amen. that, that should express that or, or explain that to us a whole lot. Because he says you are no longer mere foreigners or persons excluded from civil rights. Right. If you're not excluded from them, that means you're included in them, right? On the contrary, you share citizenship with God's people. Every one of us in here right now, because we have pledged allegiance to, to the King, we have accepted the one whom the Father has sent, we have been given citizenship in heaven. It belongs to us. That's awesome, isn't it? Amen. You see, citizenship is legal status. You are legally a citizen of the kingdom of God. Now, and notice it said household in the scripture in, two, in, in yeah, chapter yeah. 2, verse 19. Household, and also in the, in the Weymouth that I read to you, it says family. Mm -hmm. Family. You are not only just a citizen of the kingdom of God, but you're a family member of the household of God. Right. Yeah. Hey. Huh? Okay. Isn't that amazing? That yes. we, 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 we're <laughs> the family of God makes up the citizens of the kingdom of God. Yep. We are the children of God the Father. We're heirs of God mm -hmm. and joint heirs with Jesus. You know what Amen. I said last Sunday? Mm -hmm. That reminds me like Jesus is our big brother. <laughs> All right. right. Get, get, getting ready to talk about that in just a second. Okay. So keep that in mind because he is your big brother. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, in John chapter 1, I just want to point this out real quick and then we'll move, we'll move on. To show you what our big brother did for us. In John chapter 1, sorry, and I'm going to look at verse uh, 12. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God who believe on his name. So he gave us that right to become children of God who are citizens of the kingdom of God. So citizens, you're, you're in, in the proper or the right legal standing with God, and you are also in the family as well. Mm -hmm. Now in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 11, and Frankie, maybe you went there on Sunday, Hebrews 2, 11, Let's look at it and see. It says, For both he who sanctifies and those who are being sanctified are all of one, for which reason 
He is not ashamed to call them brethren. Mm. Amen. He's not ashamed to call us brothers or sisters. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Not ashamed at all. Now listen, turn with me real quickly to Matthew chapter 12. Matthew 12. Hebrews 2 Matthew 12, and we're going to look at verses 48 and 50. There were some people who were wanting audience with Jesus. Uh-huh. And we'll, we'll pick it up in verse 46 and show you who these people were. It was his mother and brothers. And while he was still talking to the multitudes, behold, his mother and brothers stood outside seeking to speak with him. Then one said to him, Look, your mother and your brothers are standing outside seeking to speak with you. Mm -hmm. But he answered and said to, one, to the one who told him, Who is my mother and my brothers? I love this. And he stretched out his hand toward his disciples and said, Here are my mother and brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my mother, is my brother, sister, and mother. Amen. Two things, two words that I'd like to focus on real quickly. Disciple. Mm -hmm. Those who were his students. Those who were disciplined in his teachings. And those who did the will of the Father. So what does that tell us? That tells us if we're in the family of God, then that means that we are to be doing the will of God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And we're to be following the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Frankie, you said something earlier about how many years you've been in the ministry and God's never really asked you your opinion about anything. Yes. Because he has his will, his way, his word. That's right. Amen. And so we follow after his way. Amen. His way. And I, I found this out in, in, in the few years that the Lord has allowed me to minister. Is that he has never ever told me or anyone else that I know of to do anything that has brought them harm. Everything that he has said has always been for our good. Amen. It's been for the good. There's not one thing, and I would challenge you to find some, one thing that God tells you in your word, in his word, that will bring you harm. I don't think you'll find no. any words. It's he all brings good out of all the bad Satan throws in our face every day. That's well, right. But if he says persecution, I mean, I mean, sometimes people right. are persecuted. Like Paul and Silas, they were in jail. Paul and Silas were jailed, but that was not God doing that. <coughs> right. And, and, and yeah. God, God didn't put them in jail. And, 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 and the thing is that, that he, didn't, he never tells them to do anything that is harmful for them or to them. Now, well, the situations preaching, of going through... Preaching God's Word, kind of... The situation of going through and, te and, and, and do a living <coughs> life will bring persecution sometimes, but that's not God bringing you persecution. But that blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Right, it's so you may be persecuted good. on this earth, but the end result, the end end, is... Exactly. exactly. Is, okay, eternity in heaven. Well, listen, we're in warfare. Uh -huh. We're in a spiritual warfare with Satan and his demons. Amen. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I do agree. We got the victory, though. Yeah. You know, one of the things we, 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 must, we must understand is that God is good. Amen. God All is the good. time. Just that simple, basic thing. If you, if you approach life and approach everything that God said, <clears throat> He is good. He's, there, there's no evil can come out of Him. Amen. He's That's good. True. That's true. All right? No harm. He's not looking to harm us. He's looking to help us. That's why he sat down in Deuteronomy, I believe it was. He sat down, um, choose life. Yeah. He said, these are, life, uh, these are ble blessings and this, these are cursing. He said, but I want you to choose life. Right. He said, follow after the good things. Follow after what I'm giving you to do good. Don't follow after the ways of this world because those are not good for you. 
But these things are good for you, and they're going to bring life. But God's always God's always about life. Amen. Amen. Is it exactly right? Because He has to be, because He is life. Yes. Right. You know? He weighs the truth and the life. Yeah. Amen. He can't He can't be about death if He's life. That's right. You know, He's about life. Wanting to give us life. Now, the thing is that we have to die to the flesh to get life. Yes. <laughs> you know? And that's that, now, that, that's, I'm not talking about a, a, a biological death. I'm talking about a death right. that, where we die to the fleshly carnal desires. Yes. Okay? All right. We are citizens of the kingdom of heaven. And with citizenship, we have rights. And we have authority. Right. Mm -hmm. Our king, who is in heaven, has given us uh, these rights. I want to I digress just a little bit here and, and talk about something. God owns everything right. that there is. Mm -hmm. There's not one thing that he does not own. Amen. Everything in this whole entire world is on loan to anyone who has it in their possession. Right. And if we, as children of God, as citizens of the kingdom, understand it, it's on loan for us to be good stewards of. Yes. Okay. That's, that's why we have it. God can give to because he, is, because he is a king, and this is one of the things that we need to understand is we grew up under a democracy, a democratic form of government or a republican Indeed. form of government. So we are, we, we are kind of, uh, we've been trained uh -huh. to vote politicians in and to vote politicians out, to right. vote presidents in, to vote them out. Some of them we don't vote them out, their, their, their term just runs out. Now we need to do the same thing with the Congress mm -hmm. and senators. There needs to be those term limits to get rid of those individuals that are not uh, that are making a career out of, out of, out of yeah. politics. But what I'm, I guess what I'm trying to get at is that Jesus is King. He's not right. voted in. He's not voted out. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It doesn't matter what we think. He's king. Sure. He rules over everything. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Okay. All right. If if Jesus as king desired to, he could give you anything in his kingdom. He can give you lands. He can give you whatever he owns, which is everything. Mm -hmm. It's up to him. Because he is king. He has that right. Okay? He blesses his children. I don't, I don't know why I want to go there, but I'm going to digress back for, for just a minute. He, he blesses us with gifts from on high. Okay? Okay. But he can take that gift at any moment and he can have us transfer it somewhere else in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. He gave it to us for us to be stewards with. Yeah. Hold it for him. Use it for the advancement of his kingdom. And then when it's needed by someone else to transfer it to that part of right. the kingdom for that work. Mm -hmm. he, he, right. he can do that. And we have to come to the place where we realize that he owns everything, we own nothing. Amen. It's all on loan. The very, very clothes that I wear right now are on loan. Right. Okay. He has blessed me with what I wear. Amen. Okay. Okay. He has blessed me with the food that is in my in our pantry at home. Right. And if he said to me right now, tonight, he said, I want you to go take and get the food out of your pantry and go take it and give it to so-and-so, I That's would need I to do it. that yeah. because it belongs to him, not to me. And he, if, if, when, he, when we do that, then this is the beauty of our king. 
He says, I got something better for you. Right. Right. Because of your obedience, I got something yeah. better for you. Our Amen. king is in heaven and he owns everything. He is Adonai. Amen. Lord. <coughs> Master. Owner of all. Amen. Amen. I thought yesterday, the breath I breathe. That belongs to God. Mm -hmm. My body. Amen. Mm -hmm. My soul. Who I am. Mm -hmm. He's long to say everything. Everything. There's not life. one thing. Now, when we realize that, and, and, and realize that if we seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness, Amen. everything will be added to us that we need. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. And, and he, he, will, he will also be able to direct us to transfer everything things that others need in their lives. Our king is advancing his kingdom here on earth. Amen. He's building his kingdom. And he's building his kingdom through his citizens, through his mm -hmm. children. Right. I get, you get, we all get the privilege and the opportunity to work with God in this great advancement of his kingdom. Hallelujah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he says, take my yoke upon you mm -hmm. to the disciples when they're walking across and they probably saw somebody plowing over here. Mm -hmm. And he says, come with me, are you labor heavy laden? I give you rest. And he says, take my yoke upon you, you'll find rest. Mm -hmm. I went, wow. Yeah. Right. So when you get in Jesus' yoke, you know what? My little church I've got hanging up there, big yoga for some of my grandparents, I think. Mm -hmm. And I've got a J for Jesus in the middle of the old ring. That's where they hook the plow to the animal. Mm -hmm. And the Y over here is for you, and it spells J O Y. That's joy. Mm -hmm. And the me is Jesus, others, yourself. Amen. That's true. And that's a, that's a principle of, of the kingdom. Yes. Is, is honor Jesus first, yes. honor, honor God first. Others, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your soul, with everything that is within you. Love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. So others and then yourself, okay? Amen. So, um, yeah, that brings great <clears throat> joy. When the Lord wants you to work for him, listen, listen to this. this we got to understand mm -hmm. this. When the Lord wants us to work for Him, He will provide all that is needed for us to get the job done. Amen. Yes. Yeah. Everything you need, Amen. it will be there. Okay, I'm going to give you an illustration of uh, when you work for the government, and I'm talking about the government in natural here on the face of this earth, the United States government, we'll put it that way. They'll give you a building to work out of. They'll give you a desk to work from. Mm -hmm. They'll give you a computer to work with mm -hmm. and everything that you need in order to get the job done. Right. Everything will be provided for you by the government. Okay? That, that's the way it happens mm -hmm. in the natural. And if you have to go somewhere, they'll provide a vehicle for you to get there. Now, our God is greater than our government yeah. here on yeah. this earth. Amen. And our government in heaven. When I worked for a couple of companies uh, in the retail business and was managing their stores, everything that I needed in order to accomplish the mission was provided for me. There was not one thing that I had to go out and get on my own. It, it, it was there. But there were, some, there were some qualifiers that went with it. Some qualifiers. What was, was this? I had to show up. Well, yeah. I had to show up and I had to do what they okay. required. Okay. You know, what they said. I showed up and did what they said. Now, oh, I won't even go there yet. 
And I had to do everything they said according to their company policy. True, true. And if I chose to go outside of their company policy and do things on my own, I wouldn't be there very long. Right. And the supplies that I needed and all the provisions would not be there because I was doing it on my own. It works that same way in the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. We go out there doing things that God has not instructed us to do, and we're doing them outside of the policies of the government. Guess what? We're on our own. Mm -hmm. He's not mm -hmm. obligated to provide anything for us if we're doing it on our own. Mm -hmm. But if we're doing it because He said do it, yeah. He will make provision for it. But he said, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and everything you need will be added to you. Amen. Right? Amen. So, if our king has told us he wants a particular job done, then we need to do it according to the kingdom principles Amen. and according to the way he's told us to do it. And he will provide everything. Now, I'm going to go in and share with you. Paul went to, I said earlier, God told Paul he was going to go to Rome, right? Right. And, and nothing could stop him from going to Rome as long as he followed after what God told him to do. Right. Right. When he did, it, listen, some will look at his life and say that it was a major hardship that he went through. But watch how God provided for him every time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God gave him a centurion escort, protected him right. mm -hmm. from the place where he left Jerusalem to go and spend that time with Festus and Felix in, in the prison there. Yeah. He, 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 God gave him a centurion escort to take him to on a ship that was provided for him to Rome. Wow. And God also let him preach for two years in his own rented house in Rome right. the, king, the message of the kingdom of God. Paid for by the, paid for by the Roman government. Right. Now, now, that's God's provision for Paul doing the work that yeah. God called okay. him to do. Okay. I'm, I'm telling you, if we will do what God has called us to do, God will give us everything we need to do it with. Yes. Amen. That's extra. That's right. Now, Pat and Darlene, you may not remember this right now at this particular moment, but there were a few years back that you guys were on a company assignment with the company Pat was working for. Right. And you right. needed an apartment, and I think it was down in Tampa. Yeah was where it was, mm -hmm. and you needed an apartment right. to be able to accomplish the task that you right. was accomplishing. Right. That company provided that apartment for right. you. They sure did. Right. They provided it. It's a not a cheap apartment. It's not a cheap apartment, yeah. but it was provided because you were doing the job that God called you to do. Right. God always that provides. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I think he provided it for a double purpose. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because you were a dual citizen. That's right. You were working for that company. Right. But you were a citizen of the kingdom of God, so he provided it for you so that you could do kingdom work as well. That's right. Amen. And we have to look at that. Your job that we you work on that we all work on if we have an outside job outside of ministry. It's a tool. It's a platform to be used for the advancement of the kingdom of God. Okay. That's what it's about. Mm -hmm. I, like, I wrote this down here earlier today. It says, you may be employed by the company you work for here on earth, but you are deployed by the king as a citizen an ambassador mm -hmm. to represent his kingdom while here on earth. Mm -hmm. We represent 
the king of all glory as his citizens. And he provides for us. He gives us rights like he gave Paul. Paul had rights in the natural that, they, that the Roman soldiers could not beat him. Right? Oh, I don't have it on do it. <laughs> All that time we're looking there, oh, we had a microphone on. Well, that's fine. All right, now I've got it on. How come somebody didn't tell me? We didn't realize, I guess. We didn't hear you, man. I don't believe you. Well, that's okay. Well, so, so, did you catch that last statement that I, that, that I stated? That I made? Okay, you may be employed by the company you work for here on earth, but you are deployed by the king as a citizen ambassador to represent right. his kingdom while here on earth. Amen. He has given you provision and he has given you rights mm -hmm. in order to function within the kingdom of God here on earth. He's also given us authority. Let's turn to Luke chapter 10. Just a moment. I'm saving those batteries in that thing. Is what I was doing. <laughs> yeah, I'm saving those batteries because I didn't want them to run out. <laughs> Luke chapter 10, and we're going to go to. Let's see. Verse 17. This is where the Lord sent out the seventy. And then the seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Serpents and scorpions are idioms. They are representations of demonic power. Okay. He's saying, I give you authority over the demonic. Okay? Yeah. We don't trample the demonic power in our own strength or in our own authority. But we do by the authority of the King of Glory. Amen. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. I believe. I want you to turn with me to Luke chapter 4. For just a moment. And look at verses 32 through 36. Here's how it should be when we come into contact with anyone or with any demonic force. <clears throat> And they were astonished at his teaching, for his word was with authority. Now in the synagogue there was a man who had a spirit of an unclean demon, and he cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be quiet and come out of him. And when the demon had thrown him in their midst, it came out of him and did not hurt him. And then they were all amazed and spoke among themselves, What a word this is. With authority and power, he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. Right. Did you notice that the spirit recognized Jesus? Yes. Right. They recognized him as the Son of God. They recognized the Spirit in Jesus. Because Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit. Now you and I are full of the Spirit of the living God. Amen. And when the demonic shows its ugly head in, in, in a place where we are, it will, it will recognize you. And it should have the same thing. You should have the same authority to be able to cast it out, and the same reaction should be there that those demons had towards Jesus. 
and I'll take a couple of minutes and tell you that same thing happened to us about a month ago at Living Truth Baptist Church up toward us, which is on the highway. They have a watch order. They have a men's farm meeting. Right. And there's a, a African American big tall guy went to the altar at invitation. And then he starts moaning and groaning and screaming and hollering. And then he starts growling. And a man walked up and said, In Jesus' name, come out of him, you demon. And when I heard that growl, I put my Bible down and walked up to The Holy Spirit said, Do not touch. And so I just stood there and said, In Jesus' name, come out of him, you demon. In Jesus' name, come out of him, you demon. I just kept repeating that. <clears throat> and the man was flipping, flipping up back. Mm -hmm. Rolling over, right. yelling, screaming. Never, 48 years, have I seen that in church building. Right. Ah. Never. Not demon possession like that. Right. But we prayed, and then that, that guy uh, standing over him reached down and touched him. And the guy starts rolling back and forth. Right. And then he calms down a little bit. And, uh, and, and then he turns up, up, up at us, and he looks at us, and his eyes is way up in his head, and his eyes come down. And he's looking at us. Right. And then, I'll tell you real quick, and then uh, I reached out my hand to him, and he reached up his hand and grabbed my hand real slow, and I mean about squashed it off. Mm -hmm. wow. right. And he stood up, and he stood up, and he walked out. Right. Right. Couldn't talk. Well, you know, the, the scripture right here says that the demon had thrown him in the midst and it came out of him and did not hurt him. And, and there, there, there can be some of that manifestation of yes, that sir. that goes on. But the, the point uh, being is that you and that other brother who prayed over them had the authority to cast out that demon. Yes, sir. Right. Right. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And, and, and here's, here, here's a key. I want, you to, I want you to understand this. The demon left. Yes, he did. Okay. You, you didn't have to go through hours and hours and hours of, of, right. uh, of, of trying to get a demon to leave. Right. You, you spoke in the name of Jesus and it left, okay? And, and that's a very important point. That's authority, okay? Amen. That's authority. Hallelujah. Now, if you go to Acts chapter 19, Paul... Um, we know that Paul cast out demons, right? And he, he did that in the name of Jesus. He, and, and he did the same thing. He just spoke to them and they, and they left. Um, this is what he did. Acts chapter 19, and I want you to look at verses 11 through 15. Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick and the diseases left them and evil spirits went out of them. Then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits saying we exorcise you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. Now watch this. And also there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, who did so. And the evil spirits answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? Yes. <laughs> then the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, overpowered them, prevailed against them, so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. Why? Because they had no authority. That's right. They were not citizens of the kingdom of God. They were not children of the family of God. And they were operating under, well, they were operating without authority. Okay. And no authority whatsoever. Because they said, what did they say? The evil spirit. Um, also, there were seven spirits who did this. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus, I know, and Paul, I know. But who are you? Okay. You know him. You did. They didn't know him because they were not connected to right. the spirit of the living God. Amen, brother. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. All right. 
The enemy of your destiny will run all over you if you don't know who you are and that you have authority. We must realize that we have authority in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ Amen. over right. the demonic. He has given it to us. He'll go to Mark chapter 16. I'll go there right now. Mark chapter 16 tells us that we will lay hands on the sick and cast out devils. He said we have that authority to be able to do it. He sent the, the, the 12 out. He sent the 70 out. He sent them with authority to heal the sick and to cast out devils. Listen, I'm a little bit further. When you don't recognize who you are in God, you don't recognize who God is, it ends up in disaster. It ends up in a life that is powerless. Even though you have the power, you don't recognize the power. Even though you have the authority, you don't recognize the authority. We are to be a great witness to this world. And when we let Satan beat us up all the time, we are not a good witness to this world. Amen. Yeah. We need to recognize who we are in Christ mm -hmm. Jesus. Yeah. If we're always sick, always broke, always downtrodden, always frustrated, always upset, always beat up and run down and run over by the devil, we are not a good witness. Mm -hmm. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You have the authority. But you have to exercise it. Amen. 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 We are citizens of the kingdom of God and we need to live like we believe we are. Amen. That's the problem with our churches today. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yes, it is. True. True. Yep. Amen. Recognize what God has given. Recognize that we are citizens of the kingdom. Recognize that we are members of the family of God. Recognize that he has given us rights and privileges as citizens and family members. Recognize that he has given us authority over the demonic. How do you recognize this? How do you understand it? How do you get a greater understanding of it? By getting into the word of God, into the constitution of the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. If you want to know what your rights are mm -hmm. and what authority you may have as a citizen of the United States of America, you go to the Constitution. Mm -hmm. right. You go and read the laws of the land. The same thing we do to know our citizenship rights and authority. We have to go to the Constitution, the Word of God, Amen. so that we can understand it. Pursue understanding. Mm -hmm. Pursue understanding the kingdom of God. And while you're pursuing understanding, get wisdom. Because wisdom has benefits. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Wisdom has benefits. I told some people, I said, uh, what's the difference between knowledge and wisdom? Mm -hmm. Simply, Knowledge is knowing facts. Right. Wisdom is knowing how to use the facts. Right. I have this written down right here in my notes. Knowledge is knowing how something works. Wisdom is using the knowledge. Hallelujah. Amen. Guys, we live in a kingdom. Yes. Yeah. We live in a kingdom <clears throat> that is governed by a king. An all-powerful, almighty, all-glorious, all-wonderful king. 
who owns everything. A king of yes. glory, a king of love, a king of compassion, a king of kindness, a king of provision, protection, a great and wonderful king who has made a way for us to be citizens of this wonderful kingdom. He's given us the opportunity and the privilege to be able to work with him in the affairs of the kingdom, to be able to live an abundant life as citizens of his kingdom. Mm -hmm. He's given us the privilege to call him Abba, Father. He's given us the privilege to call him Brother. Mm -hmm. He's given us the privilege to be in his presence in the throne room of grace and mercy. as citizens of the kingdom and its family members. He's given us authority and personal rights to be able to exercise the power of the kingdom over every situation in our lives. Hallelujah. Amen. So our mindset really should be as Christians I live in a kingdom, ruled by a king, and I am a citizen of that kingdom, and I have authority as long as I live by the constitution of that kingdom. Amen. 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 We should repeat that to ourselves yeah. over and over and over. Would you repeat that statement, those three, for Simpson? I live in a kingdom. Our mindset should be, I live in a kingdom mm -hmm. ruled by a king. Mm -hmm. Not by a governor, not by a prime minister, Amen. not by Amen. a politician, but by a king whose word is absolute. I am a citizen of that kingdom, number two. And I have authority as long as I live by the constitution of the kingdom. You see, because we're gonna, I want to kind of just touch on that, just a minute on that third point. For if I begin to go against the policies of the kingdom, that means I've gone against the policies of the king. And what I've done is I've taken myself out of right relationship with the king. Mm -hmm. So we have to stay walking within the policies and the principles of the kingdom in order to stay in that right relationship with the king to be able to have the rights of the authority. Hallelujah. Amen. We, the church, must become a people who keep the commandments of the king. Amen. A people who live by the constitution of the kingdom of God. Amen. Let me tell you how Jesus defined Two, two things that Jesus focused on or, or, or were very important to him. His, his focus was on kingdom, for sure. Right. He came into his ministry re, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Right. He spoke of kingdom all throughout. I think was, I, I saw he mentioned church, I believe it, it's recorded four times in the in four gospels. But he mentioned kingdom 134 times. So I, th I think his emphasis was more on the kingdom than it was on the church. Yes. Yeah. And and so turn with me to John chapter 14. Yeah, John chapter 14. And I, and I'm gonna close up here very very quickly. John chapter 14. And let's start reading at verse 21. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. The word manifest there, the manifest. Let me read the, the, what the definition is. 
is to cause to shine, to appear, to come to view, to reveal, to exhibit, to make visible. So God will make himself visible yeah. to us. He will reveal himself to us if we keep his commandments. Mm -hmm. If we love him, he says, we will keep his commandments. If we love him, we will keep his commandments. Right. Amen. And he will reveal himself to us. He proves himself to us, is what he does. Yeah. He shows us who he is when we love him and we keep his commandments. He says he's going to prove to us he's real. And the rights and the privileges and the authority, he says, we have are real as law-abiding citizens. The two most important things to Jesus, the two most important things, according to these verses that we just read here, was love mm -hmm. and law. Mm -hmm. If you love me, you'll keep my commands. You'll keep my law. Now I know it's popular today in the church for people to say we don't live under law, we live under grace. Mm -hmm. But you see the thing that we need to understand is that we are saved by grace. Yes. But that does not exempt us from the laws the principles, the statutes of the kingdom of God. It does not exempt us. It gives us what? Favor to be able to live how Jesus wants us to live. Mm -hmm. Because he said, if you love me, you're going to keep my commands. And his commands, the word of a king, is law. Amen. Now, I'm not talking about pharisaical law. I'm not talking right. about, uh, about the, the way that the Pharisees approach law. But I'm talking about there are principles. There are laws that God has set up right. that we are to live by to be able to exercise the rights and the authority. Hallelujah. I'm just going to probably just leave it right there. Because if I keep on, I'm going to have to go into a deeper place of explaining what I just said. And maybe it would just be food for thought for someone and just let it go there. And we'll come back at a later date and talk about that. Okay? those principles. And you know, dear brother, when we slip up, mess up, sin up, God is faithful to pull us back. Amen. He disciplines those whom He loves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hallelujah. Right. His, Agape. Agape. His, His yoke is what? What you said was? It's joy. J-O-Y. Jesus it's others yourself. It's easy, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Yeah. He says, take my yoke upon you. He says, my uh, my burden is light. And he said, you'll find rest. Right. So see, we're not pulling the load. Jesus is pulling the load. We're going along with the ride. Mm -hmm. For the ride. Beside of Jesus. Yeah. Wow. To be side by side with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And look, we got the Holy Spirit in us. Yeah. Oh, I don't know I need to say this, but what removed Adam and Eve from the garden was that they did not obey the law one right, man. of the king. Right. Only the one. kingdom. This no. is, that's pre-Mosaic mm -hmm. Mosaic law, okay? That's kingdom law. And okay. so that's what had them removed. Right. 
was because they did not do what the king said. Now God they had pretty more choice. Amen. We, we have the same choices today yes, yes. to live according to the word of God. But God is, I want to go back and say, we have a counselor who walks with us every day, the Holy Spirit. He shows us and tells us how to walk according to the word of God. If we fail, we have a mediator. We have a Christ, Jesus Christ, our advocate. Amen. He goes before the Father for us. Amen. And we have a Father who's willing to forgive us yes. of all our sins. Amen. But He also, all three of them, expect us to walk according to the Word of the Kingdom of God. Amen. 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 The Beatitudes tell us from the time a person gets saved, like you did the other day, you know, and that when we go through, bless, 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 man. And then those at home and thirst, and, 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 and wow. And then when we leave here, wow. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Father, thank you so much for this evening. Thank you for yes. the presence of your Holy Spirit, Lord. If there's anything, Lord God, that I have said tonight that has not been, Lord, of your Holy Spirit, and it is, I, I pray, God, that you will, uh, you will erase that <laughs> somehow. Yeah, miraculously, Lord. Lord, I also pray, God, that uh, if anything was said, Lord God, that needed to be heard by someone that they did not understand, that they would search deep into the Scriptures to find it. Yes, Lord. And, Lord, that you would reveal yourself to them, manifest yourself to them, Lord God, and give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. 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 God bless you, each and every one. Amen. 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 Hallelujah.